Today on our show, we are going to talk about three things that are awesome. Yeah, one of them is going to make you Thor. You'll need a bonding agent to make it all better. Oh my God, I got nothing for the third <laughs> And a third story. Because we forced it down your throat. Today on Fat Man on Batman. Welcome to Fat Man Batman. I'm Kevin Smith. And I'm Mark Bernard. Uh, okay. Yes. Let's talk about X Force. Why wouldn't we talk about X Force? Drew Goddard, mm, he uh, of the Martian, and he made he wrote the Martian. Oscar and he, nominee. He made uh, Cabin in the Woods mm -hmm, with uh, his old buddy Joss Whedon. He made uh, Daredevil. He, yeah, he was the creator. He gets created by credit and wrote the first couple of episodes. Uh, has been tapped to direct uh, direct an X Force movie. Now he was tapped to direct a Sinister Six movie a few years ago when Andrew Garfield mm -hmm. was Spider Man, but that went away. Now Fox has tapped him to do an X-Force movie, but what's special about this X-Force movie mm -hmm. is two of the main characters of this X-Force team movie are Deadpool yep. and Cable, who's being introduced in Deadpool 2. So, my lord, Fox just stepped up their game. They're like, hey, we invented the superhero mm -hmm. team movie, so... This is what we do. We're going to do it again, and this time maybe it's R-rated. They might make it R-rated, you think? I mean, if you're going to put Deadpool in it, and clearly... It is not a barrier to box office. Tough Why? to pull back the reins now. Why wouldn't you? That's right. So yeah. that's happening. Who's in it? Um, well, aside from those two guys we talked about, um, they haven't really mentioned who the cast, the roster would be. It's a Black Ops team, mm -hmm. X-Force, in this iteration. So they're doing Suicide Squad. I mean, yeah. Yeah, because you can. You can. You can. Especially more Deadpool. That's good, good for me. And Deadpool taking a... What do they call it? Ensemble role. Mm -hmm. As opposed to like, look at me, I'm the middle yeah, of the show. He'll be the Will Smith yes. of this particular So it really movie. is fucking Suicide Squad. Totally. But, and they've got a bunch of X-Men stuff coming down the pike. They what have, uh, let's see, ba 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 X-Men New Mutants. I want it. Coming out next April. Want it. Deadpool 2 is next June. Want it. And then X-Men Dark Phoenix is next November. Who's directing it? That is Simon Kinberg himself. Oh, all right. I want it. Yeah. So next year, we already get three. Three installments of the X Universe. It's a triple X year, ladies and gentlemen. Dirty. That's what that means. It sounds like 2019 will be when we get to see Can't X Force. Wait. I'm all for it. Fantastic. Good for him, man. <laughs> yeah. More X Men movies. And the he's guy, a good look, they got it down to a science. They don't need Marvel help over there, man. It's a shame, but it's the way it is. But Marvel don't need their help, man. They got Thor coming, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Thor is about to happen. Ragnarok. And this looks like one of the most joyously comic book comic book movies ever mm. made seems to embrace its kooky origins and stuff and not kind of like let's normalize this spaceships I'm fucking asgard I'm fucking hella I'm fucking valkyrie my fucking revengers team i know that was kind of sweet that's kind of dope He's what do like, we call ourselves, ourselves? Oh, no. the revengers the revengers come on you it's know. fantastic and they are spending money on it i mean they they launched the new trailer during the the nfl kickoff game last night yeah that ain't a fucking cheap buy that's not cheap but they got all the money in the world because they got that fucking immigrant song on it so <laughs> you know that ain't cheap they they ponied up disney ponied mm -hmm. up for led zeppelin what's the director's name uh taika waititi funny which i just like to say yeah it's a fun name uh but funny like yeah. this movie looks like fun like i, I mean it's a crime it, crime it's ridiculous to be like Oh, this looks better than the first two Thor movies. Fuck yeah, it does. This is, but this is this is just in a whole different <coughs> place altogether, man. Like this is totally. It, this this looks better than most movies. Period. Not like oh, this looks better than the last two Thors. They're taking Thor and putting it into a whole new place. I mean, they're taking they, Thor through a whole new door. Ooh, nice. Thank you. And they're putting it in space. Like Thor in space is the bridge to Guardians of the Galaxy coming back for Avengers Infinity War. And they say there's going to be a Guardians cameo right. in, in Thor Ragnarok. And if you've seen, if you've seen the, the, the footage that came out of man, both man, I mean, Comic-Con and D23, they showed like a teaser for Avengers Infinity War, which opens with, you know, the, in the Milano, the fucking Guardians of the Galaxy, they run into fucking Thor, like on the windshield of that ship. So like, plank. Yep. What's that? I don't know. Turn on the windshield wipers. We got to get it off. Oh, I can't wait. So yeah, like and, and, and tonally, that's what this is doing. Like this is a comedy. It's a buddy comedy ultimately. Yes. And it feels that that is the thing that also helps to sort of nip the tuck into what Guardians is, and then bring that tone back into the main Marvel universe. And a backdoor Hulk movie as well. Yeah. 
I love the fact that they've decided, and it makes all the sense in the world, that Hulk doesn't actually need his own movie. No, it's not that they've decided he doesn't need his own movie. It's just like they can't. They can't mm. do a solo Hulk movie because Universal still has the rights to do all the solo Hulk movies. Mm. So they're like, we can't do one. We'll just stick him in fucking every other movie we got. And the character is actually better served by being a foil to other people. I would agree with that. I think their hands being tied from doing a Hulk movie, like, look, in the hands of anybody, you know, great material can come forth. But I, I think he's, I, I think, do this for yeah. a while. Let him be in other people's movies where people are like, I love the Hulk, till it's a fever pitch. And then you do your Hulk movie. Then you sit down at the table with Universal or whatnot. And they're mm -hmm. like, all right, let's do it. But they don't even need to. Marvel's nope. like, Kevin Feige, you got to figure it out. He's like, fuck it. I'm sticking Hulk and Thor yeah. and Ragnarok. And they're Hell buddies. Yeah. They're having a good time by themselves. Getting after it. Getting that it done. movie looks phenomenal. I read something online that I want to talk to you about. So, so Hela is the villain. Yes. First female Marvel villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yep. Uh, played by Kate Blanchett, one of the greatest mm. actresses on the planet. Legit serious mm. fucking actress. Although that, technically the collector chick from Guardians 2. Would qualify as an antagonist at the very least. Which one? The gold-plated lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the collective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but she wasn't a bad guy. In yeah. fact, they were the bad guys because fucking rockets stole their batteries. Right. But then they show up. I mean, once you try to kill the heroes, then you become de facto the bad guy. Kinda, but, but you know, I think that, that that'll, that'll be the asterisk on that little sentence. Give it to Kate Blanchett, would you? Fuck it, I'm sorry. This fucking guy. Galadriel. So, Kate Blanchett. Dark is the morning storm! She brings out her horns and mm. like this and shit in the trailers. Looks awesome. Looks like she's enjoying the fuck out of oh, playing. Oh, hell the goddess yeah. of death. Now, that line, which we've seen in trailers a lot, is she's mm. on the goddess of death and all that shit. Somebody said online... I don't know who this is, and I can't. I don't remember if I read it on a tweet or somebody <coughs> in a legit article or something like that. Conjecture. Yeah. Um, that you know, Thanos. Mm -hmm. All who's about all about the Avengers, Infinity War. All about that day. In the comics, he was. He's always trying to impress Lady Death. Mm -hmm. So he'll kill universes to impress Death, who he's fallen in love with. There's some talk that Hela. They're going to drop the Lady Death, and it's Hela that Thanos is trying to impress. What? And that Hela, she ain't one and done in Thor. She'll be back in Avengers in the Infinity War. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but I like that very much. I like it way more than them introducing, like, here's Lady Death and shit. Yeah. Play with the character you already got. Bring Kate Blanchett back and tie those movies together. This smells like something that the Marvel team Kevin Feige would do. I hope it's true. Yeah. I hope that conjecture is true. And honestly, like the Marvel Universe needs another good villain. I mean, they've le they've leant so hard on Loki yeah. as the one that worked. And he's now a good guy. And now he's a good guy. Like basically they make all their villains, you know, kind of co-heroes. Like Winter Soldier was the villain. Gets now he's a good guy. Hero. Yeah. You know, so it's like they needed another giant baddie. And if it's got to be Kate Blanchett, you know, who is one of the best actors on the planet, not a bad pull. She's fantastic. It's just from the trailer alone. I hope this is true. I hope the Avengers uh, two movies involve Thanos wanting to impress Hera in some way. Maybe that's what brings him. I don't know. I, look, I ain't the writer. I just like watching this shit. Hell yeah. But that's exciting to me. I look Do forward it. to this Thor movie like you fucking read about. I'm not alone. I've read an article where it's like the most anticipated movie of the fall is Thor Ragnarok. Did you ever imagine you'd live in a world where somebody's like, the most anticipated movie is a Thor movie. It's amazing. In the right hands, anything can be elevated. And, like, and there are people now who are asking, like, what, is, what does Ragnarok mean? Let me tell you. Yeah. Let me explain it to you. Uh, there's also, I read an article about how if you've seen the trailer so far, that you haven't seen any Lady Sif or mm. the Warriors 3. Mm. Um, but they're saying, don't be fooled by that. There is, there's news about them. I think yeah. it has to do with, I think maybe they get fucking killed in Asgard. Maybe. I mean, Lady Sif, uh, that actress, um, she's on the cast list. Like, so, so boom, they're in it. I think she's in the movie. I don't know about the rest but of the But if Hela's coming and she's like, Asgard is dead. Like, those somebody's got to die. And that would be bad. I'd make Thor real mad you kill Lady Sif. Mm. And the Warriors 3. Hell, you kill anyone, Thor gets upset. Uh, I can't wait to see this movie. When's it coming out? November. Like, early November, too. Got all the money. Let's Hell talk yeah. about... Let's Jimmy Jimmy Bond? Yes. Mark just dropped some information. <laughs> so James Bond is is maybe the last ding 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 ding
gun. He's a sensitive man. Wow. I believe those are the lyrics. I, I think you're right. Uh, James Bond is maybe the last great free agent as far as franchises go. Why free agent? Because James Bond belongs to a production company, belongs to Ion Productions, owned by the Broccoli's. So he's not owned by a studio. Not owned by a studio. Has no real studio affiliation. Studios can enter a contractual relationship with that production company, and Sony has for the longest time, for the last like 15 years, been the home of Bond. Before yes. that, MGM UA, and then they went out of business, Sony got the rights. The rights are, are expiring. And so after the next Daniel Craig movie, um, which I don't think they have a name for, but it's Bond 25. It will be up for grabs. <laughs> It'll be up for grabs, and every studio in Hollywood wants it because these movies... They make money. They make money. I mean, Skyfall... And you can Even also, Spectre. like, you can, like, it's not just Daniel Craig. It's like, you can stick anybody in there. You yes. replace your bond every few years, you make a new franchise. And it becomes, a, it, be, it refreshes. It's this continual money-making machine. Nobody's that, bored of bond yet. Apparently not. So, there are a bunch of suitors. You know, Paramount wants a, wants a piece of it. I'm sure Disney would like to get in that business, because Disney collects franchises. Like, I collect pounds. Good. Sterling. No, even better. Double. Even better. Yeah. Entendre! You never know where it's going to go. You never know where it's, it's like a triple entendre. Fucking after it. And so now the two new bidders into this project are Amazon and Apple. Apple is the most surprising fucking thing in the world. Why? They have got all the money. And they've, they've got announced all the money. that we're making content now. And they're making content, but they've never made theatrical content in mm -hmm. any way. I can't imagine there's a world in which Bond would only exist on Apple devices. True. Because that is, you know, foregoing. I don't think you make a billion dollars on a movie by only no. putting it on Apple. Movies are the sexy. It's not essential, but it's a nice commercial for yeah. the rest of the movie's life. You know, and some of the executives at Sony, especially on the TV side, have just left Sony to help form Apple's new TV division. Ooh. Yeah. Could you imagine we're living in a world where Apple might own James Bond? I mean, or Amazon and shit. Maybe throw Netflix into that pocket. They're not bidding yet, but they've got all the money too. They've got all the money too. Like it, it, and it's the last great, like we said, the last great unattached franchise. Mm -hmm. The Broccoli's would still produce Barbara Broccoli and Michael Wilson, her husband, taking over for Cubby Broccoli, who originated it back in the '60s. But mm -hmm. it's a, it's a whole new world where streaming giants want to be in the bond business. Well, it's it seems like all these streaming giants are. I mean, never mind the old studio system. This is. This yeah. is going to command the future. Apple, Amazon, Netflix. Netflix, they just announced uh, they're going to be losing. Uh, remember, they lost mm. all the Disney programming. But they're like, right. hey, the Marvel movies and Star Wars, they're going to be fine right now. Yeah. They took those as well. Disney's like, you know what? We're yanking that shit, too, yeah. for our own streaming services. Starting so, in 2019. It's competitive, man. And Disney's like, look, we ain't getting left out of this. We're not taking a piece of Netflix when we mm. could like create our own streaming app. And they've already got it in Europe. Yeah. Disney on demand or whatever. You know, and apparently it's pretty good. Yeah. You know, and doesn't cost. It's not a backbreaker. But as we talked about before, every one of these four ninety nine, five ninety nine, seven ninety nines will at some point add up to two hundred dollars. You're spending a month on way more stream. than you spend on cable right now. Pretty much. Um, yeah, man. Disney's going digital in the big bad way. It took them a minute, but now they're like, we're all in. They're going yeah. digital with their sports. They're going app with everything else. Like. That's the world we live in at this point. Pretty much. So I, I wonder what happens. We'll keep an eye on James Bond. We will indeed. Could you imagine he wound up at Amazon? So like he fucking Daniel Craig could be like, you know, I'm on Her Majesty's Secret Service. But if you're looking for good service, mm. there are low prices on this mm. Amazon Day sale boutique and happening would, right now. And they would call the movie pew, like pew. Prime Directive. <laughs> Just Amazon's, Prime Amazon's Prime Directive. Directive. Starring James Bond. <laughs> Um, there it is, folks. Yes. That's all the news we got for you, man. Nothing else to talk about. No. Dry week. What Sometimes do you that's that. Hey. Think about the shit we did talk about. We talked a bunch of shit. Go Analyze some stuff. Yeah, and make some shit up, too. Come on. There and then tell go. us about it. Yeah, let us know. Write to us at the address that's not listed below. Yeah, I'll keep doing the hand thing as if yeah, it's going to be right there. there. It's never going to be there. Wait, yeah. it ain't happening. See? Still mm -hmm. happening. Nope. Uh, that's it. We'll be back uh, with more in the next episode. Until then, for Fat Man on Batman, I'm Kevin Smith. And I'm Mark Bernard. Tune in next episode. Same fat time, same fat channel, smodcast.com or youtube.com slash Kevin Smith. See, I'm not going to point anymore. I point all the time. It's not pointing to anything. No, Maybe it should be up there. there. Maybe it should be up there where they are. Fuck it. It's Who believing. Cares? Believing Without in the dream. Seeing. I believe in the children of the Our future. future. Tease them well. Let them lead the way. Show, Show them all the beauty, beauty they possess inside. inside. Give, Give them, them a sense. sense. 
of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be. Everybody's searching for a hero. I didn't know we were going to do round two. We're done. We're done.